The House comes to questions for oral answer. Question number one in the name of Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is for the Minister for Social Housing. Does she stand by her statement on emergency housing? We are on track to have 8,600 places across the country available. We want to have the bulk of those in place by this winter. If so, can she guarantee there won't be more families living in cars and garages this winter? Mr Speaker. Oh, the Honourable Amy Adams. Yes and no. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Were the emergency housing providers wrong when they warned recently that more homeless families will be sleeping in cars, parks and garages in Auckland this winter because of a desperate shortage of affordable rentals? Mr. The Speaker. Honourable Amy Adams. Well, Mr. Speaker, what I would say is that this government has recognised that there is a need for more emergency and transitional housing places to help people in insecure housing, which is why we committed $354 million to doing something no government has ever done, which is to provide government assistance to build 2,150 more emergency and transitional social housing places, which will house up to 8,600 households every year. Mr. Speaker, that is a significant improvement in the situation prior to this government. Supplementary. Order. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. So how is it that by March this year only a third of the emergency housing places she promised are actually available, only five more beds than in September last year? What? Mr Speaker. Honourable Amy Adams. Mr Speaker, that's because where these have to be new houses and the MSD teams are in the market looking flat out for every available piece of land, every available provider. We have the money available, right. but we have to find the real estate and building and bringing new houses to market doesn't happen quickly. We are moving at pace and over the period the member quotes, we've actually delivered 90 new places, but as some contracts have come to a close, right. uh, that has seen the net number change. As I've said, Mr Speaker, we're on track to have the Five bulk beds, of our new places available for winter. Yeah, very good. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Well, where are the new beds going to come from, given that she has in the pipeline only enough to deliver half of what she promised in September, with only 143 more properties contracted to be provided by NGOs before winter? Get on with it, Mr. The Speaker. Honourable Amy well, Mr. Adams. Speaker, I dispute the member's characterisation because actually our indications are that we're well on track to have at least 1,700 of those 2,100 in place for this winter, and we're working hard to ensure even more are in place for this winter. That is the commitment we've made to have the bulk of them in place, and I have every confidence that we'll do that. That's right. Brief. Supplementary question. Why has the government failed to follow through on its promises after thousands of people endured a winter of misery last year and now we head into another winter with a housing market that is still acutely short of affordable rentals? Yes. The Speaker. Honourable Amy well, Mr. Speaker, Adams. Speaker, the government hasn't failed to deliver on its promises. In fact, it's done exactly what it promised to exactly. do, which is to put $354 million of new money into funding an area that's never been funded previously to build 2,150 places That's right. That's across right. New Zealand, which will house 8,600 families every year, yeah. and we're well on track to have the bulk of those in place by this winter. Mr Speaker, that's exactly what we promised. We're doing it, something that the Labor government failed to do yeah. in all its time in office, despite clear evidence of need. Save a to supplementary. Nine long years. Order. Order. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Does she regret that after eight years of her government denying that there's a housing crisis, that she as the minister is now having to, to deal with the human cost of her colleagues' failed housing policy? 
Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Amy Mr. Adams. Speaker, well, we're absolutely clear that there is a need for emergency and transitional funding, which is why we're putting $354 million into it. Yeah. But let's be clear, this is not a new problem, Mr. Speaker. What is new right. is that this is a government that is actually doing something about it, whether it's through Minister Smith's uh, land use development proposals and bringing on available capability. This is a government that's backing development, while Labor did nothing in their time in office and is now opposing housing development. Supplementary. Supplementary question, the Honourable Michael Woodhouse. To the Minister, what reports has she seen of people living in cars? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Amy Well, Mr Speaker, I've seen reports from the Bay of Plenty Times of people sleeping in cars and under trees and the Salvation Army turning people away. I've seen stories from the New Zealand Herald of Monte Cecilia, people turning away homes that end up in cars and garages because there's no room. The Salvation Army of people, people living in shanty towns similar to those in Brazil and the Philippines. Of people living in Northland in cars because they're unable to afford housing. All of those, Mr Speaker, were from 2004 and 2005 oh. when Labour did oh. nothing. Oh. Order. Order. Question number two. Order. I've called James Shaw. Question number two.